Welcome to Power Boat Talk, the podcast where we talk everything performance boats with your host, Joe Rode. Hello, welcome to Power Boat Talk. So today I have Thomas and Mark Weigel, who are the owners of Tough Boats up in Ontario, Canada. And I've been following these guys on social media. I don't know much about them, so we're going to get to get to learn a lot about them today. But they had a they had a great weekend at the Lake of the Ozarks shootout where they set the record for the fastest pass in the three quarter mile course in a single engine V bottom at 135 miles an hour, which which was what really caught my eye about them. Other than their boats are really cool looking, so we're going to talk about that. And I'm glad to get a chance to talk to them. So thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's go into it. Obviously, uh, that just happened a couple of days ago, so it's still a hot topic. Um, how are you guys feeling about it? And, and certainly like to talk about the particulars of the boat and the run. Yeah, well, right now we're, we're, we're coming down from, from the whole thing, so we're, we're, we're tired of stuff. But uh, it, it, I always talk about uh, um, when preparing for an event, for example, you know, laying out what tools you're going to do. Um, but then... Uh, we know that when the adventure actually happens, it's never what you planned, never what you thought. So you've got a goal, you go, and then whatever happens will be different. So in hindsight, it was exactly that again. So it was a great adventure. The whole, the trip down, the, the, all the pieces, um, the, the, in the end, the goal was met. Um, and, and then we're back and then now you reflect back. So oh, it was, it was uh, a, a lovely thing. And in the end, the, that target of shooting for the, uh, to retake the, uh, the that speed title, uh, fastest single engine V bottom, so we got that done, and everything else was was sort of bonus. Yeah, it, it it was a great run. If you guys if you guys go on and watch it, it's all over the internet, and I'll post it up on my site too. But it's that boat. I mean, it was beautiful, man. Just the set it took, and it was just it was unbelievable. It's a thirty four foot boat, and then maybe you guys could tell me about the engine drive, that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, it was it was the the lot of shootout that that uh, is where that boat came from, so it, and, and specifically against Tyler. So uh, every time we went into to the competition, we had the least amount of horsepower compared to the other guys, and and we still were doing well. Uh, we got to the point where the 28 platform was too small to to have more horsepower. More horsepower also came with more weight. So our stuff is all about balance. Uh, so weight positioning balance. So we thought, how are we going to do this? And and so at that point, we we conceived of and and drew up this this new 34. So uh, I went through that whole process, built the 34, did some testing. We had some challenges with uh, with with all kinds of external things, and and we actually um, restarted. So we did a 2.0, and the boat became longer. So it became 35 feet. Uh, six inches, so it, it will now be called the Tough 36. The bottom oh, nice. is essentially the same, but the, there's a bustle area at the back that was added. Uh, um, so that's why the, the first boat then says it's a 34, the Winter Soldier, but it, it is in the platform that we will now, going forward, call the 36. Um, so so that whole process, I mean, in hindsight, that, that COVID prevented us from going back uh, was good because we could further prepare, test, and sort out the thing, and then got to the point where it was running just really fantastic. So, at home in a in a in our environment, when you can choose the day with the right atmosphere, pressure, and everything's lovely, uh, it's it's run over 148 miles an hour in the rev limiter a couple of times. Um, well, every time we we've tried. Uh, so we need more propeller um, to to keep pushing. But we're at the point where uh, an open cockpit boat uh, at 150 miles an hour is not, not the greatest idea. So um, so I guess like the Century Club, you just want to get the two ticks up. So uh, we've got another propeller prepared. We're waiting this for this fall when the people are off the lake, our, our local environment here. Pull the trigger again. If we pull a number over 150 something, we'll call it a day. But there's... There's so many little, all those little things. You know, you get, you get 95% of the way there, but then there's all those little things that get you one more and one more. Um, we haven't even got to that, and and I don't know that that we will bother um, for for like the total top speed number without making like a canopied proper mission mm -hmm. thing. 
So, so um, yeah, that that's sort of the that all that's left for that that particular project. Uh, I'll, I'll let uh, so Thomas describe the the horsepower thing. That's an interesting development as well. Yeah, so the motor is uh, an 1100 uh, 1350 dual calibration uh, motor, and uh, a lot of people kept asking, why don't you just put 1350 key in and let her eat? And I mean, it at the to be honest, the 1350, the way the power comes on, it comes on so aggressive, and when the turbos hit at around 6,000 RPM, it hits so hard, it walks the boat sideways so uncontrollably that in a three-quarter mile, it, it upsets it too much when I'm trying to be that aggressive for accelerating, and to put the boat in a situation to be not really safe in front of the whole world watching is not a great idea. So that's why we ran an 1100, we, we've done almost all of our testing, well, almost We've done all, all the testing in 1100, um, so we know I know that horsepower mode very well. I know how the power comes on, so it's just it was a lot more it was more for a safety reason, and I felt a lot more comfortable being able to use that horsepower um, instead of using the 1350 uh, key. It just you know I didn't want to have a mistake in front of all the people watching. It is more more so why we didn't use the the horsepower key, and then even back home too, we're going so fast with 1100 mode that. You know, we make a couple of changes, and like Dad was saying, well, we're gonna go right over that 150 number with 1100. So why do we need, you know, why do we need 1350? Put something uncomfortable in the boat. So that's why yeah, we have. That's interesting. These. Yeah, but it, but man, that's a testament to the to the bottom you came up with, and and as as finely tuned as you've got the hull, that you could be that efficient with just the 1100. It so we it was a, a lovely process. Some of the some of the variations that we were testing, um, I had a configuration where the boat handled really nice, and in in 1350 uh, key, it it went 120 miles an hour. Done. That was it. All horsepower consumed, but it all felt good. And if you didn't know any better, you thought, "Oh, that was a cool boat," but but we knew that there was something not not right. So the um, um, in further investigation and, and testing revealed our mistake and and got going and now it just keeps coming it just keeps rolling it's it's uh it's impressive and scary <laughs> yeah I, I and i i keep saying it man I, it, it just looked so good it was just just amazing going as fast as it was for and it, it's even more impressive a 36 foot boat basically with a single engine i mean it's it's pretty incredible with the full interior in it. So we had all the back yeah. seats in. Yeah. So it was ready to go and get ice cream. Um, yeah. We didn't have a, a sport hatch on it or anything. It was, it was, we tried to have it. So you simulate it's a, it's a pleasure boat, not a race boat that you can go that fast um, without having, you know, you know, take the passenger seat out and get all the weight out of it. I think I had around a half tank of fuel in it. Um, so we weren't really pushing, pushing it just, you know, get the number and, you know, if we're challenged, you know, there's still lots on the table if we want to come back and keep going. But like we said, we're going so fast that, um, you know, a canopy system or something like that would make it safer if you wanted to keep pushing the number beyond 140 uh, in the three quarter mile shootout, it would be proper. And or even if, when we go over the 150 mile an hour mark, you know, to keep going faster, to be safe, better to have a canopy and stuff like that would be better. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. So when you when you figured out the modification when it was in the thirty four foot version, so you basically took the thirty four foot version and just stretched it or whatever. You didn't start you didn't start with a new piece of paper, right? Or did you? Correct. We uh, um, yeah we've we've never had a like a you know like what they call a running plug or a, a test platform. So um, because of those we, those other difficulties we had um, it related to the tooling, which which we didn't do. Um, uh, we knew we had to re redo and correct that, but then it gave us the opportunity to to test and, and we could chop things up and and try all kinds of things because it didn't matter anymore. And then boat number one became the plug with the mods on it to uh, to start over. So in hindsight, I mean, it was really expensive and a lot of time, but the result was uh, I was you know really really happy with with what we've got there now. Yeah. Well, and if you guys are, you know, boat builders, you've been in the boat business long enough, then, you know, money's not an object, right? Like you can't even, you can't even worry about that. So, yeah, yeah the, 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 um, 
we always tell everybody uh, <laughs> we're in this about passion, and 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 you can see uh, in, in the business uh, with with passion around. Maybe not the best business plan, but that's what makes us go to work. Uh, so we just need to earn enough to 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 keep going. But but it's all about you know being better, uh, do, and and so the, the the easy measuring stick is going faster. But but there's better handling, um, better rough water ability, all that stuff. But but the the next boat really should be better than the previous boat otherwise you're making production canoes and who cares <laughs> so do you think i mean next year do you think you'll i don't know if you've thought about that yet so next year you'll be back with the canopy or still kind of just kicking around where it's going to go so we've talked about it um i think for this project and as fast as we went with this boat i think that uh this boat will probably be uh probably be sold um and then Actually, the next project isn't isn't a V bottom boat. We're actually thinking about dipping our toe into the cat world and <laughs> and making a a, a a cat for a stock class and or a, a pleasure boat. Um, I want to go racing like my dad and mom did. <laughs> so um, and the only way to do that is is really you kind of have to just build your own boat, um, you know, to uh, to get in and, and and go race. But yeah, we're thinking we don't think we're gonna have a V bottom boat at the shootout. We might. Um, but uh, it, it could possibly, we might show up with a cat, which might be totally different, which leaves the door wide open for Tyler and uh, some of the New York guys have some really fast uh, single engine V-bottom stuff, um, So, uh, which we talk to them all the time and, you know, we talk about setup and, and, we're, and we're pretty good friends with, every, with all those guys. Um, so uh, anyway, it, the door is open now for them to set a number, but if they do set a new number, we'll be watching and uh, we will definitely take note and we know how to improve the setup from where we're at now um, and, and improve that number again So uh, with ease. So um, we're not afraid to, uh, to keep going. Yeah, cool. And, and you, you keep, uh, Tyler, we're talking, we're referring to Tyler Crockett, right? Tyler Crockett Racing Engines, I think is his company. Yeah, right, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. and, he's, and he, he had the record for a while. And uh, uh, smaller boat, I think he had, didn't he have quite a bit more horsepower than that? A lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a crazy running boat. So that's another one you might want to go back and look at some videos of. It was a, it was a little bit different uh, situation than what you guys, what you guys had. So, yeah, um, he was saying uh, so three thousand horsepower, alcohol burning. Uh, so it's still roughly triple where we're at. Um, but yeah, when when we were when we were there floating, waiting for him to make our pass, we you know we're close by our chatting, and then it's his turn up, and he goes and. You're sitting there, and when he starts, and he starts on the throttle, it's easily the loudest boat really? in the shootout, and yeah. that's also including American ethanol. That so it is wow. so loud, it is like a top fuel drag, like car. It is it is incredible. Though the, everything shakes with fury. That's how much horsepower he's making out of this little teeny motor in this boat. It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So so he's got you on the obnoxious uh, the obnoxious yeah. front. Oh yeah. 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 Well, we talked to him a couple of times. We kept saying, hey, like, we should do a joint project. And, you know, his power with our efficiency boat, it, the, the speed and the potential is, is, is just, you can't even imagine how fast it would be. Probably unusable. Uh, yeah. Completely, yeah, it would just be fun. And I think it would be, uh, in terms of people to watch, that would be, that'd be pretty cool. Well, yeah, put that together. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun to watch. So, well, cool. And I was going to ask you about the drive setup and all that, but obviously you said it's, it's your model that you could take to the poker run or just cruising. So it's, it's probably not something crazy. Obviously it's very usable setup as far as drive height and all that. Yeah. So I was going to say, because we're getting at the, 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 the limit of, of a, a traditional out drive propeller skag setup. And so what do you do from here? So as, as you can imagine, as the water comes off the bottom of the boat, you're fully surfacing, the propeller is, is like a paddle wheel. And, it, and the harder you, you apply horsepower to it, the more it wants to walk the back of the boat around and, and, and you know, roll you over. So the, the solution to that, there's a couple of easy ones. Uh, you can do a duo prop setup. Uh, Wiseman is, is, uh, has designed a thing already years ago to cancel that. So, you know, same as like an, a torpedo or a submarine. Or the other way is is like a top fuel dragster. They have one engine, then they go through a transmission, split it, and go to two prop shafts. And and so both of those 
resolve the <coughs> issue. But if we start doing that, then then that, that title, fastest single engine V-bottom, starts to split into to different paths again. And so is a, is a dual prop a dual engine? Kind of, more so than, than not. Um, so I would think that if, if anyone's asking, the, that class should sort of remain uh, a single propeller, single drive. Uh, so whether you want to use a rudder or use, use an outdrive or whatever, that's fine. But otherwise, you'll, you'll distort the thing into something else. Um, but but for sure we are already at at those sort of limits where we're fighting fighting the forces, and that that becomes the new challenge that we have to do uh, deal with, and and then the limits are around that, and especially in like the three quarter inch shootout distance, the acceleration has to be so aggressive, and 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 then fighting against that uh, that prop torque, that's that's the, the the thing that we're all dealing with. Yeah, gotcha. And at, the, and at the end of the day, you want to sell boats too, right? So if you get crazy with that kind of stuff, I mean. It starts to get too far past what a customer or a normal person can just jump in and go. Right now it's jump in, turnkey, 89 fuel, and you have 1,100 horsepower. It's a 148, hopefully 150 mile an hour boat. Um, so it's already so extreme, but it's easy. It's, you know, mercury parts. Um, so, you know, you can have warranty on the motor for however long the, you bought warranty for and, and, and then, you know, a mercury racing propeller, um, and, and away you go. Um, so it's not, uh, anything super, super exotic. It's just, you know, we made the boat do all the work. Um, and then the whole point is to have, you can buy power from whoever your favorite is, say Teague, or you want to buy a Tyler Crockett motor, great. If you want to buy mercury power or... Uh, Tom Robinson's V16 uh, motor, you can do really anything you want, um, but the whole point is to make the boat fast and you put your power in. Um, that's that's the whole point. Yeah, absolutely. And and for the guy that is just a pleasure boat, I mean, you don't even need that kind of power because the boat's so efficient. I mean, you're going to have a good, nice, I don't know, have you run it with like, have you ever run it with, this, you know, a 502 or anything like that? Or we, We've talked about that a couple of times. So we thought a really good really fast setup would be Mercury's 860. So it's the same motor with the turbos taken off. Mm -hmm. And and should still be a little over 130 miles an hour on a good day. Uh, but but when we do numbers, uh, there's, a, there's a speed calculator that we use that really works on our configuration stuff. And so we can predict pretty close what, what, what to expect. And um, if, you, if you had a Merc 700, so just a, or let's say the 565, so whatever we do on the Tough 28, uh, the big one will match that. The bottom design is so advanced that uh, it should be about the same. So the Tough 28 with with a out of the box 565, just a cheap, easy motor, uh, runs a little over 100 miles an hour, and it should do the very same thing on on this 36 foot boat. So imagine having you know the first of all the, the savings in, in cost, but you know if you don't have over 100 miles an hour, you got you know, nice big easy boat the bump over waves and cruise around and you know with ease that's uh that's good yeah yeah no that's amazing that's that's definitely the right way to do it so so mark i know i know your background is boat racing i i saw read some stuff you used to offshore race with your wife and and is that how you got into it i mean is that how you learned all this is are you an engineer by trade or where'd you where'd you learn all this how did you get so good at this stuff uh so in regards to the to the so the formal training, uh, like engineering, I always used to say, uh, I'm, uh, and I was supposed to 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 go to uh, university and, and and go to engineering, but circumstance didn't didn't happen. Um, so if if you were taught um, at school uh, what the the guy that's doing the best is doing, and then you were to do that, then the best you could do is to match what that best guy did. But you have to dream past that or you're only going to match the existing um, you know, baseline. Um, so I started as, as a kid uh, making, uh, taking a block of wood, uh, grinding it into a shape of a, of a boat and sh pushing it around the pool and then it, it got into RC boats and RC boats, so you buy a kit, build it, you think that that was kind of a, an idiot design so then using the same sort of concept, build another one and change the design, modify it, and, and go again. And, and it tended to be that, that my version ended up better. That advanced into, you know, small, single engine outboards, you know, the Hydrostream. So you start with the Hydrostream, mm. 
uh, mod vp racing was just really coming on it was a real big deal when when i was uh into that so I raced mod vp uh and and the even the designs the all the different configurations at the time now i was i was you know, i'm gonna say it's just a snot-nosed kid and i'm i'm watching I, I didn't have any great ideas of my own but i was noticing all the different approaches all the different things that guys did uh, it was oh, it was just thrilling and exciting the early 80s with all that stuff and then then through through to the 90s and then when it all crashed but um yeah then then, then it's kind of moved up to offshore um and then when you'd wreck your stuff which everybody will in offshore it's just what it is i couldn't afford to um to pay someone to fix it so that it just sort of fell to me so forced to i i I learned, uh, in my case, I, I ran all skaters. So I'd call Peter and say, look, I broke this. How do I do that? And he'd laugh and say, oh, geez, is that all you did? And he, he, you know, here's what you do. And, and I did. And again, paid attention uh, to how did Peter lay out his stuff. And then just when the day came, uh, I guess it's been long enough that I've been sort of around it and thinking about it. It just all kept falling into place. So, um, and then I, I like to say that had I gone to school, I feel I would have been corrupted. Uh, you know, someone says, okay, here's how you do a thing. Then how yeah. do you unthink that and rethink a new direction? And and so I'm thankful that, that uh, I didn't do that and, and I can dream freely. So um, I think that's that's how it worked. Uh, anyway, I'm, it's, it is working. I don't and That's how I think it all ha ended up happening. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. That's very cool. And then, so at some point, you just made the decision, like I mean, what was the what was the first boat you did on your own? <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, we we won sort of the classes in in offshore racing, and then the logical thing was to to step up into the next class. But as it turned out, we couldn't even really afford the class we were in. <laughs> so the the costs and stuff, we were just falling behind a little on on maintenance and stuff because we just couldn't afford it. Uh, and then to move up, the next one was like 10 times more expensive. Mm -hmm. So then we're looking for a sponsor or something. And the reality of that is this is not going to happen. So we're sort of forced out. So we're sitting around. We bought a, a dead performance boat somewhere, and I carved it apart. And I'm looking at how horribly it was built. And the thoughts were just, so what would happen if I built a play boat um, with the same sort of approach and technology we're using in the offshore boat? And and that really, that was the beginnings. Um I started with with like like many others um, the, the Challenger 21 um, basic shape. I, I made a couple little changes and, and I entered um, with with n not a, a lot of particular confidence, but uh, it it worked really well. And and then from there, that was the last boat that that we ever sort of borrowed. From there, all other boats were were designed by myself and 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 then advanced forward. Um, so, so you know, that's you step in, you you, you try it, to, uh, and you say, oh, that worked out. So then you step another, and then same with the RC boats. You have some crazy ideas, and you question, well, why didn't anyone else do this? It's very obvious. And uh, in the end, the answer was um, because they were either afraid or didn't think of it. Don't 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 think your idea is wrong. So same thing applies to the big stuff. You have a weird idea, better test it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and quote my, my uh, guru, so Peter Len from Skater, and he says, don't ask anyone, try it yourself and you will know. And he's absolutely right. And like what you said about, you know, going to school and learning from books. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can pencil in anything you want, but it's still got to be out there. And, and you can do the same thing by just outworking them, by trying it, trying it, trying it, trying it. And maybe sometimes you go down the wrong path for a long time, but at some point right it's it's the ultimate thing you you learn by failing so the guy that wants to work hard and f is willing to fail as much as possible so, so even randy sism told me in a conversation one time he says i can i can get 10 engineers to calculate a, a laminate schedule for me and i will get 10 different answers oh. so if there was if there was a correct way you would get one answer but everyone's different so there's no one right way there could be a wrong way but there could be many right ways so Again, if if if, uh, if that thought came in inspiration, give it a go. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's it. So then, what motivated you to put up a shingle and say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a boat builder now. I've got boats for sale." <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> you know, you you you, uh, 
you know, uh, I was supposed to, I took over the family business. I was, I was told at a young age, uh, you will, you will do this. So, you know, when you get to that age in school and, and they, and they, they ask, okay, so what is it when you'll be, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so th th I didn't even ask that question. I was told. So the day came finally, uh, my brother and I took over and after two years, I realized I really hate this. <laughs> I, I want to, there's no way I want to do this for the rest of my life. So, so, uh, <clears throat> we bailed out. Um, so then, then you go around lost like a flower child trying to figure out your life. And everybody's saying, well, you're stupid. Uh, you, you like boats. Why don't you make boats? And it's like, no, you're, you're nuts. You don't understand. It's, it's, there's all these things you, you can't, you, you can't just do that. That's nuts. Anyway, it took, took many years and, and just slowly creep a little closer to it. And then one day, I mean, I never, I never really immersed myself into that thought. And one day, just all of a sudden I faced it and I thought, okay, why not? So, and there it was. But it, it wasn't from day one, I'm going to build boats. I met lots of people around me here in Canada that told me they're going to build boats and never did. But that was the farthest thing that, that, to, to consider that I would actually do that. But anyway, it, it, it came. It came late, um, but better late than, than never. Um, and then it just, um, you know, heart, it's like, you know, they talk about pushing the train. So all your energy taken to get the train moving. But once it's rolling, then it's rolling. So then Thomas comes along and uh, and then just just now double push. But it's, yeah, it's, it's flying along now. So I just uh, I just came and I just jump on and then just put the NOS on and and keep going. <laughs> it's like, OK, how do I keep it going? How do I make it better? How do I, you know, take as much information as I can from him and, and keep doing what he's been doing? And then how do I improve that is, is my challenge. So I got big shoes to fill. Um, and I also want to race as well. So there's, uh, there's lots to do and not a lot of time, but, you know, we're just, we'll just keep trucking and, and keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask that. So from, from early on, it was probably a little bit different story for you, Thomas. You were exposed to it early on, and this is not what he told you you were going to do is probably what you wanted to do well yeah I, I was spoiled so mom's side of the family uh were big boaters obviously dad's side of the family was big boaters and then mom and dad then boating as well so I, all i've been doing has been boating and i remember my mom saying don't get into the business with your dad you're gonna go do something else and then if you want to you can come back anyway so i did i tried so tried some other stuff explored some things and I'll be honest, I, I just really felt comfortable doing going to work with him. And, and don't get me wrong, the work sucks. If you've ever been inside a boat and ground out a boat at the bottom of a boat or inside of a boat or laminating the hull deck together, you know, some people don't grasp what that's like. Uh, and anyway, that I, I do enjoy going in and creating with my hands and, and, and then seeing the, the, you know, you have a drawing of, of a boat for a customer and you, you know, you're working through the project and at the very end, through all the, you know, work that sucks, you know, the customer sees you, you take him for a ride and you see the look on his face when you take him for the ride for the first time. It didn't matter. That's what it's all about right there. That's, that's it. You know, that's awesome. And you guys obviously get along well enough to where you can do this, which is, <clears throat> which is really good. I've, I've known a lot of guys that have been in business and, uh, a lot of guys have aged out with out sons or daughters to help them or sons and daughters that have said forget it i'm not gonna do this because you're you're too rigid to, to flex and let me in you know so when i see a father son thing work i it's it's really cool i like it and i like to see it so yeah you're right I, I've, I've observed where um i i assumed that everyone else would have had exactly the same thing and it's not so so yeah i consider myself very lucky that uh he's not exactly a mini me but he's he's close enough that uh you know, we're heading the same direction. So yeah, very good. Very lucky. I think the only thing that, uh, we disagree on sometimes is color. And, uh, obviously I love my bright colors and in your face colors and he likes his more subtle, uh, classic colors. And so when we go to do a boat for ourselves, um, you can definitely see which one was mine and you can see which one was more leaning towards his side. Um, but, uh, that really, we get along in the shop. You know, we work all day, every day, seven days a week, and we take the summer off. So, uh, you know, we, we just work along and we're, and we don't really actually talk when we work. We, you know, uh, we just, we just work and, you know, you just kind of, you know, you need a tool or something. It's just, you know, you kind of just working and then all of a sudden the other person has the tool in their hand for you. It just, you just kind of know, and you're just, it's just a really good flow, 
uh, and, and, and we just work along really without any kind of interruption and, and then we'll talk about you know things and you know and then even when we go testing a boat we're we're both you know we're both drivers so he's got a lot more seat time than me and I'm I'm trying to catch up uh, on my seat time and experience everything and so I'll, he'll take the boat out and he won't tell me anything that was going on and then he'll, and then I'll take the boat out and then we'll both have a conversation of both of both what we felt and usually we can narrow in if there's something kind of off in the setup or something um, we'll narrow in really quite quickly on what we think we should do and it doesn't matter what the boat is or, or you know what motor or whatever we're very in tune with it by both going out in it uh, and taking a ride that's so I think that's pretty we're pretty lucky that way that we're both uh, in tune like that um, it makes things a lot easier and, and faster <laughs> and yeah. uh, setting up and building yeah that's a great method it's a really great method yeah. So, so at what point did you get to get in the driver's seat, Thomas? So it was probably, I mean, I've been driving all of my own personal builds for a while. So I've been training and, and I've been driving all of his stuff. Um, but just more recently when we started to go really, really fast, um, we both kind of agreed that uh, my youthfulness of being just a, maybe a little bit faster uh, on the reaction time. Reaction. Uh, would be a little bit uh, better for going very fast just in case but at the same time I don't have the you know driving for a long time and have that mm -hmm. very, all that experience of every situation of you know every circumstance I, I don't have that yet I, I put lots of hours in um, but he has definitely a lot more hours and stuff in than me but I'm, I'm trying to get there and experience everything I can um, so really it just came down to um, this last boat going very very fast uh, and just really the reaction time uh, situation of just in case we needed that little bit of edge I, I think I have a little bit more there but he definitely does have the uh, the experience on top of mine so you know both of us combined we both do you know we both drive it uh, I mean he that that is his boat the Winter Soldier is his boat mm. uh, I just borrowed it for the weekend um, but uh, yeah, so it's a joint effort, but for the top number, I I, I did jump in there for that now, so uh, slowly taking that over finally. So the, yeah. the, the, there's the reality is that uh, I'm 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 far enough down the road where I'm I'm sort of on the downs already, and um, we're we're going so extreme, and uh, if if Thomas was was game for it, then uh, you know put my ego aside and put the best guy in, and and make it happen. Yeah, and and I imagine Mark racing offshore for all the years that you have that, that one thing you would have over Thomas is you've been in a trouble a lot in boats, right? You've gotten yourself probably sideways and every which way. So where yeah, Thomas probably hasn't water. been in those situations. Yeah. I've been in the water three times. So Thomas hasn't, hasn't yet. Um, and then when you go in with a canopy is a different thing as, as well. Um, so uh, all that, even the mindset to go on the edge and um, to, to, to keep ego out and, and intensity in, uh, you know, seen, been there, done that, seen it. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we talk about, we're always talking about stuff. So I try to, to pass along as much uh, as I can. Um, I can say that luckily Thomas, when he was young, um, you know, we put him in a little hot rod boat and he had his oh shit moment uh, a couple of times, which was good. I mean, in hindsight, parents yeah. would be freaking out. But, um, you, you got to build in that fear, and I, I see some some customers um, haven't got that one yet, and that's that's a little scary. Uh, but Thomas got got the stuff, got good balance. Um, it, that that's really it. Then just grow from there. Then just build experience. Yeah, and the fact is, much testing as you guys have done with these boats, developing this stuff on your own, like yeah, I mean that's that's, that's just got to be a ton of seat time. Yeah, that's right. Um, even just going for a spirited ride on your own uh, you know you'll hit that wakeboard boat that you didn't see the sun was wrong or something and and you know all those things they, they and it all adds up gets you more comfortable intuitive in, in ahead of the boat I mean, we always talk about uh, especially a, a V bottom that you have to walk there's a you know there's a balance thing and you want to be ahead of it not sort of reacting to it so yeah for sure absolutely just the more time you know it, and a little more spirited way is always good yeah cool um, I want to ask you guys too, logistically, I mean, what's, what's the challenges 
that you guys have with having having a boat business up in Canada? I mean, it's got a. I mean, you tell me. I'm curious. I'll tell you, it's it's terrible. Yeah. We are so restricted on so many different things. Um, so, like the shop is just us. This is it. This is the whole team. This is the laminating team, the spray team, the infusion team, the, the janitor. janitor, the sweep up, the you know turn the lights off when you go. It, we're the whole thing, and then and then mom does the book work. That we're that that's the whole thing. So Canada really restricts um, having employees in our environment of the smell and and, oh. and the spraying and stuff like that. It makes it very difficult. Um, and then to have all the all those systems and stuff make it so expensive to run the the shop uh with uh, employees um in canada that uh the price of the boat would be so astronomically too much just to pay off pay for the facility cost um it really doesn't make it all uh really worth it in the end uh which is which is unfortunate um but you know we're making do with what we have what you know just us two scooting along um we are sold three years out uh, of bills. Oh, you're kidding me! So, wow. so we have lots, lots to do. Uh, wow. and we have lots of new, lots of new projects on the drawing board that we haven't even told people about that we want to do eventually, uh, and also the new updates on every model as we go along as we learn new things. Um, so yes, we're very busy. Uh, if we could have a little more help, it would be fantastic. Um, a lot of the materials and stuff come out of the U.S. and with our dollar. Uh, difference is also difficult, so it's about. Uh... So, so yeah, the dollar represents a big thing. So, um, if if I buy a, a spark plug, it costs me twenty five percent more for the same thing. For and, and I work this, you know, the same for an hour as somebody else and, and earn the same, but in the end, it, it ends up costing me more. So, so everything costs more. Now, if it's sold in Canada, then then everyone's subject to that, whether you bought it finished from the states or not. So that's okay, but. Even uh, let's say I need to borrow a prop from, uh, you know, Scott McCormick down on Velocity. He needs a, needs a, he has a prop. I need to try in a hurry. Um, everybody else in the states can overnight a prop or something, and it costs a couple of bucks shipping. Well, when it crosses the border, all of a sudden the government gets involved, brokerage fees and and paperwork, and it becomes a just a pain in the butt. So everything is a, a, a greater challenge. So it's a good thing we're passionate about it because there's 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 these these things that just Oh, just beats you down. Uh, makes just just makes it tougher. Yeah. So so that's why you got to go to stuff like Lotto to just really okay. Now we know why we do it. Yeah. So when we go to big events and uh, even when we have our own little uh, gatherings here at home with some of the boats, that it's always really worth it when you finally see all the customers with all their stuff. And then you know if you're having a hard time with a shipping company or something, or they're two months late or even if you want to send a check down to the u.s to pay for a part it you know you pay for a four day uh you know mail and it gets there in two weeks and you know your material's still sitting there it didn't leave and it's just oh the, some of the stuff but you know you have to kind of let it go and remember that you know we love what we do and we're excited about what we do uh we just have to endure some of the you know difficulties that canada throws at us but it's okay you know we got Free healthcare, so uh, you know whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> keep, yeah, keep telling yourself that, right? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so, so are so are the majority of your co customers are they Canadians, or do you sell a lot outside of Canada? Yeah, we're probably ninety percent Canadian, ten percent American. I, I get inquiries from all over the world, uh, but there nothing's gone beyond the the U.S. So, um, yeah, the, there was you know guys in the United Arab Emirates. There's uh, there was even a Russians calling one time. There's a guy from China, a few from Australia, you know, Virgin Islands, Canary Islands. Uh, you know, just it's it's fascinating to see how people see stuff and reach out. But I think in the end, um, shipping you really got to want something if, if you're going to ship it, you know, from a different oh, yeah. continent. So um, anyway, we haven't had that yet. The other difficulty that we have too is uh, it's very hard to explain what the boat does in terms of handling. And uh, and then that experience of being in it, um, being uh, so far away from even just from you guys down in the U.S. is, you know, we tell everybody if if you come for a ride, you'll understand. So everybody asks, you know, everybody says, hey, you know, your stuff's flyweight potato chip, you know, never been in rough water, can't do any of this. And I and the only real answer to that is come for a ride and then you will know. So I can't tell you 
you know, we've, you know, dad's been racing offshore. He knows what rough water is. He's broken everything. He's broken the best, you know, and these guys are like, oh, you know, are you out in six foot waves? And it's like, you don't know what a six foot wave, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. So the answer to that question is always come for a ride. You know, you can do your chit chat on social media all you want. It's fine, but come for a ride and then you'll know. And I will take you out and I'll show you what it can do. Uh, we had a customer down at the Ozarks on the weekend with a, a new 25 foot. Um, and if you know Lotto, it's rough on Friday and Saturday during the shootout and people roll over their 40 foot cats and break stuff. And our, one of our customers down there with his 25 foot and he was just went down to wave jump and bang it through the water. And he was having the time of his life in that thing and the boat's perfectly fine. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's difficult being this far away for, you know, but it's always just comfort. If you can, make the effort, come for a ride. That's what it's all about. And we, we give rides all the time. Until the snow comes, we give rides. That's that's what we do. Yeah, very cool. Well, luckily it is difficult and expensive because how would, you're already three years behind. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you I, I feel... the, if, if you bring the price down, you'd be in trouble. More trouble. Well, there's the call that... Um... I've had several, surprisingly. Uh, so the, the, uh, someone's really interested, just kind of stumble across it, all excited, and I tell them it's, in fact, back in COVID, the lineup was five years out. And uh, the, 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 I get this response where the guy will say something like, I'm, I'm 71, I can't wait. And, you know, as much as you want to do something about that, you, you still can't. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, uh, I'd love to, to, to do more. But anyway, the, the reality is it, it's just us. This is it. But yeah, well, that makes yeah. it custom. So we like it nice and small net. So we get to learn the customer uh, and then we make the boat truly custom for them. So are they flashy? Do they like show? Are they, do they want to go really fast on the river? Do they want to, you know, an in-between boat for, you know, just cruising, you know, are they interested in only going 60 miles an hour and never want to go fast and they want, you know, f you know, very, you know, showy or, ultimate speed so we build it custom for each person so even when a used boat comes for sale um we always have to tell people be make sure you call and ask you know what was that boat built for mm -hmm. and who is it built for because some customers um have you know very basic normal boat which is great and then some customers have some very extreme projects that aren't necessarily for most people um so then the, the there's a little bit of confusion there um, but that that's because we make it custom for each person. So each person gets their own build. Um, it's kind of like skater where everyone's built differently. Um, so we do the same thing as well. Uh, every single one is differently built for each person. Uh, that makes it special. So that, that's, that's what we like. Yeah. Well, and it's a small company, you guys, you know, small crew, obviously it's, it's probably a, a you know, really kind of almost a family they're kind of part of your family. It's so small. Everything's so small. And, you know, I don't imagine you build 500 boats a year. So every, you know, that's, so that's, there's that's, a problem. Um, you know, you, you, you build one of these projects and, and, um, you know, people are people and, and some people say some, something derogatory and, and you end up being so passionate about it that you take it personally. And, and, and this is a problem. It's uh, not everybody is going to like what you did, but, uh, you have to, you have to let that one go. But, yeah, we're so attached that uh, you know every every nut and screw you put in it. It's not like you turned on the assembly line and, and the stuff just runs, sure. um, you know, that blue one I didn't even see. So th th there's a vulnerability to to being that attached to the stuff. Yeah, but from a, from a customer standpoint, I mean, people are spending a lot of money for a boat, and uh, I would have to think it's 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 a great feeling to know. Like I know the guys that touched every bolt in the thing. I know the guys. I know their cell phones. They're gonna. You know, they're going to walk me through if there's a problem, I'm going to hear about it. And so that's, again, probably why you're three years behind. Yeah, it's it's good. We like uh, most of the customers come by and, and see their build uh, during the process, and um, which is good. They come in, they get to touch it, they chat to us, and, and uh, you get to see the details and, you know, come and smell the smell and see what that's all about. <laughs> uh, um and then uh, some customers, you know, they, they trust you fully and say, listen, I want, you know, some colors like this and maybe a little red, a little of this. You guys, you do it. 
and then let me know. And it's like, Surpri- wow. Surprise me at the end. Surprise me at the end. And, it, and it, yeah. they said, well, I fully trust you. Make it look good. I want colors this way. And, and then you have free range to do what you think I would like. And it's like, yeah. okay. It's, uh, yeah. it's a little nervous and nerve-wracking, you know. It, but every time, we've actually had several of the last boats that went out. Um, the customer said, hey, listen, uh, you know, I'm not really good at putting colors together. I'm This is not my, you know, expertise. I'm not very good at this. But, you know, I was thinking... You know something like this uh can you make something you know you know some of these colors look good and and then just you know let me know and then great so we get to have some fun with some projects and uh obviously we keep the customer in the loop the whole time but uh we get to uh be a little more creative and and think about things the customer might have not have thought about and uh in the end they they really do like like that uh sometimes mm-hmm. yeah and i think i think guys when a guy buys a custom boat i mean the fact that he got to pick that stuff out and and uh, there's absolutely something really special about that. So, so given that you're not going to be adding, you know, 15 new new employees in the next couple of years, what's so what's the you guys? I mean, is this a new model every year, every couple of years, and that's that's your goal, and that's that's it. It's as much as you want to do. You don't want to be the next skater, the next MTI. It's the end game, you think? Well, I mean, what what I would like is is probably like two employees. Uh, so I don't know how to do that yet, or if we will, uh, just just to sort of relieve a little pressure, um, and um, I, I like a, sort of a a two year two year wait list is about right, so that anytime and we always dreaming up new ideas that you can schedule one in and do it instead of know that you you're busy with all the customers and you can't do that idea you, you have to keep working the stuff. Um, we've got. Uh, we, we were going to, so we built a whole bunch of new stuff and, and instead of powering through and, and um, you know, building customers' orders and, and making money, we kept doing new stuff. Um, so then we, you know, the logic business says that, that go ahead and, and start building and, and, you know, make, earn money. But this next project, the cat project, starts to, to noodle itself in. And so now that's going to cut into production a, a little bit. But... Beyond that, there's there's no big projects in mind, luckily for now, uh, and then it's just sort of refinement. Um, so, yeah, right now the the looking ahead, just the cat project is uh, the only sort of totally new project, and and that's just tweaking and and uh, upgrading and refining as as we go for now. But yeah, for sure, something's going to come up, uh, you know, soon enough anyway. We have uh, we have several customers that just have their name down as a slot so they said listen if you have a new project that you didn't even tell anybody about and you haven't made yet just write me down for whatever that is and uh, so he doesn't he's not even they're not even scheduled for necessarily a certain one they say you know if there's a new motor program that comes out and then if you can make something around that I'm game so we have a couple customers that you know what if there's something really exciting and new that they trust us fully which is is a little bit uh it's a pretty nerve nerve-wracking but uh you know that makes it fun um and, th- and all those guys are always really really good uh, customers to deal with like that so uh, when, when i built my my version of the, the, the tough 21 um like starting off to build two a year that's it and um and then you've got all these ideas that you want to do but you don't have the opportunity you don't have enough boat builds to try stuff in and so things were, you know, slow in development was slow because things weren't moving. Uh, so as that picked up, then all these new ideas get tried and tried and tried. And advancement keeps going faster, which is, is kind of crazy to think about. So, and then when you get a customer that, that, that you know, lucky to have a customer like that, that trusts yeah. you uh, to say, go, um, wow, I mean, dream big, say, okay, here's what I'm thinking. And, and they're either like, yeah, go, or yeah. But generally, they're like, "Yeah, if I have at it. Uh, I can't wait." So, that that's just you know the, the the gates open, and again, the passion just pours, and the and, and the ideas flow. So we love that. That's that's you know you're working. The, the customer is part of allowed that created the the ability for that to happen. That's amazing. That that everybody works together and going the same way. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool to have people like that. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, like the fact that I know, like you said, sometimes we start pushing our projects ahead and maybe, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not writing invoices like we should, but God, at the end of the day, that's what you guys like. And, and I'm sure every guy, every guy that owns a boat company now, the guys, you know, Randy Sism probably 
says, man, I wish I had time to stop and do something new. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm sure you're at a point where there's a lot of guys that would love to emulate that and be able to spend more time on the, the stuff they, they're really, you know, they're creative guys and the stuff they want to do different or, or new. So that's, that's really cool that you guys get to do that. And, and, I, and I was, I was actually, before you talk, said about the guys penciling themselves in for the next project, I was thinking like, man, your three year wait, you guys do a lot of stuff like that guy's boat could be obsolete a couple of times by the time he gets to it. Yeah, so really they, they just reserve a spot, and they can, when the turn comes up, they can make it whatever they want. They got an idea in their head at that time, but by the time it gets there, uh, yeah, the things could have shifted, and they can say, yep, I want that one now. And then usually they'll go in line for for the next three years, because there's, just in case, I'm, I'll be ready. So it's all good. Yeah, man. You got to love customers like that. So very cool. Did we miss anything about the uh, about the, the your your run at Lotto? Anything unusual? I mean, the the eleven hundred slash thirteen fifteen thing, the fifty thing was very cool. Um, anything? I mean, you do anything with tabs? You do anything tricky, or it's just? Well, I I can say that historically, uh, when we ran in Lotto, um, what the boat could do in the home water was slower than what we could do in Lotto water. And and it was you know, it was hot and stuff like it like it is in, at Lotto, and it was really unusual. Now this year, um, Thomas was was driving in the rain, and and there was coming up to it. There was like a week of incredibly hot. Like I I haven't had an experience of that sort of heat. Uh, now that blew out just in time, but it brought rain and and then the the humidity. So um, there's the, the conditions were kind of turned around. Um, so that was it was a challenge now, everybody had exactly the same challenge i'm not i'm not you know it's fair uh but uh it, the, the the variation you come in from just too damn hot uh can't get wait can't wait to get back in the air conditioning to uh to to standing out in the rain and i was amazed how many people at at ron's and 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 in line and and at, at the uh, at the inn where we're at, uh, they, they just stood out in the rain and just kept watching. And they sent Thomas in the driving rain. Wow. One pass was it was raining so hard that the radar gun didn't even see him. So he made a run for nothing. The guy said, "Oh look, apologize. Come right back up to the front and come come in and go again." Uh, but th that was you know part of the adventure I mentioned at the beginning. So that these things that you don't see coming. Uh, and and next time you think about okay so what if that that happened how how can we handle that better, but that that just you know first of all it was a real challenge but it was a it was one of those adventure things that you can talk about uh, don't know if we'll get it again but um, you know remember that time so uh, that that was different that that made a really unique experience. Anything else about the company you guys would like to tell people or? Yeah, so um, some of the models we make, um, we make a 16-foot model. We call it the kid's boat, but, I mean, it's it's really just a little go-kart uh, boat. So, you know, for uh, even my mom and dad go out and take it out and cruise around in the thing, and it's just a great little package. It, it scoots around, handles great. Um, so it's a 16-foot we make that for the 40 to uh, 90 horsepower, or oh, okay. uh, it really comes down to, to the motor weight. Um, some of the new four strokes are too heavy now officially for that. So, um, you have to keep the weight down on the back. Um, then we make a, a 20 foot model. Um, that's also for the new four stroke motors for like a V6, Mercury 225, 200, 150, um, or any of the old two stroke 2.5 race motors and stuff like that. So that's what that size is for. It's also a great little pack to go bang through some big waves or get up and fly. Um, we make a 25 foot model, uh, that's for the 300 platform. Um, so Mercury 300, Yamaha, uh, 250 SHO, anything like that. Um, we make a, which is also can be, that 25 can also be a inboard motor, uh, with, uh, Ilmore. Uh, they make a 570 motor, a lightweight, 570, 570 horsepower, uh, motor. And they also are making a new 630 or 650 uh, motor that's going to have a built-in supercharger based off the LS uh, platform, which is going to be very cool. We'll be doing a project like with it in the fall, which will be very fast. Um, we make a 28-foot model, which is uh, also inboard power, so uh, it can be a Mercury 565 up to a Mercury 860, which we've done. 
or it can be twin outboard uh, 300 platforms. Mm -hmm. So it could be, again, Mercury or Yamaha. Um, and we've also, so then there's the 34 foot model, which can be any really inboard configuration you'd want, single. And then also it can be a twin outboard, so 300 or the new, well, I guess 450 is now gone. So the new 500 uh, twin outboard can be on that as well. Um, so we make several models, lots of different uh, variations of stuff. So um, if a customer calls and says, hey, you know, this is kind of my boating condition. This is what I'm going to do. And we can kind of narrow them into what they might like. All the boats have very, very different flavors, very different driving uh, aspects and stuff. So it makes it fun because it's custom. We can do that. We can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. and we can make it how you want it. Have you rigged one with the, the 34 with the 500 jet? No, we did one with a, it was a 34 with 450s. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's 120 miles an hour already and we're out of prop. Uh, our setup requires, uh, there's more greater slip, I can go into detail, but um, we need more prop yet. But with 450s, it, it's going to put us right into uh, like cat territory, like 125 anyway. Wow. Um, and, um, and, and the trick is now propping on that. But uh, so we're, we're pretty impressed that that V can sort of run with run with the the, the cats like that. It's obviously some very very fast stuff. But um, yeah, a couple of yeah. So so that's yeah. There's only been one so far. Um, um, and and then like some of these projects, you get going along and, and developing, and you get bogged down, can't get a particular prop or something. Meanwhile, a customer. Um, wants to buy it, so off it goes, and then you don't finish. So then you have to wait for the next one to start over and, and keep pushing forward. Oh, gotcha. We get a lot of customers that uh, will be going through with a project, and you're kind of dialing it in. It's starting to do really good, and you're getting pretty close to getting to the, what the maximum is. And the customer says, listen, can I have it next weekend? And it's like, no, no, you don't understand. Uh, we're not, we're not done getting it, you know, fully. And they're like, listen, I'll take it next weekend if you sell it to me right now. And like, I don't need to go that fast, but I, I want it right now. And it's like, fine, we'll have to do another one, <laughs> uh, which is great. We're, we're totally okay with the sale, but yeah. uh, it's interesting how uh, several projects have done that, where the customer says, I want that really bad. And it's like, yeah. great, okay, and then you have yeah. to do another one later. Well, you guys are kind of weird in that you don't want to give it to them either, though, right? Because you're so, you, you the way you guys tinker, man. You're just like, no, nope. <laughs> just one more week. Yeah, we're we're bad like that. I mean, we can just keep <laughs> tweaking, keep keep tweaking. Uh, some of the you know, there's lots of very good setup guys um, all over, like Scott Porte down in Florida. Um, just guys that just love working on their stuff and making improvements constantly. And and we do the same thing, but we have to then sell the project. Uh, so at some point, uh, you know, it's always good to mo move on and, and move to the next one and then make the next one again. And um, so we always keep making it better. That's the whole point. So there's there's like business rears its ugly head and and forces, you know, you got to you got to kind of rotate things. So it's all right. Um, you know, it, we'll circle back and go at it again sometime. Yeah. So so having to pay bills is actually a good thing sometimes because otherwise you'd never if you didn't yeah. have to pay bills. Yeah. Not unusual. We got like two two of our own projects going, and then 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 somebody somebody else's project. Uh, they're making some changes, and we're developing three things at once, uh, and they're all exciting. But I'm one of those guys. My wife accused me of, of not being able to multitask, so I like to like immerse Barry into one at a time and, and really get in, and, and then come out and do the other. But to flip back and forth is not my favorite. So um, yeah, if, if we can just uh, you know if we can adjust that, but yeah reality is whatever it is so we gotta yeah. move with that well i think your your way when you're testing boats you're trying to get a boat right that's the way to do it unfortunately it's not always how you get to do it but it's absolutely the way to do it right you don't get lost you don't have to start over again and yeah so as well it's only been a couple of days but it'll be interesting to see how the phone rings uh i mean does it usually do it every year or after after this or every time it's even more so i think there was a, a dozen price requests Usually in the spring, there's you know there's a certain amount, and as the season goes down, it tapers down. But there's this blip of of you know a dozen right away after the shootout, and so yeah, that that's how it shows up. Yeah, a lot of times it's people that's like you know who who is the, what who's these guys, and so they reach out. So uh, we are getting uh, we are getting more 
known from my, like I I do the social media, so I've been I've been pushing on social media pretty hard. So we are a lot more known now on uh, social media instead of just like those. Yeah, there's those guys in Canada, but now we're more known. So um, there are a lot more people that know of us. So there's not that many people that are like, oh, who's that? So most of the people do know, but they now they're part of the team and they're excited to see the next project or um, watch us at an event or. Uh, just want to be involved. They, there's more of that now uh, uh, than before, which is which is really fun. Really, go yeah. down to an event and and people come from Canada uh, that we didn't invite or bring, and they're there and they're like, really? "We're here to see fun." And it's like, <laughs> like here, take a hat or a t-shirt or something because that's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Well, I, I I know I keep saying it, but I I just. And I'm an old guy. Like I grew up out here with the bottom day cruiser stuff. Is how I grew up with. So I love that stuff. So I, I thought the I thought the boat when I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is this is really you know. Obviously that factory billet V bottom was crazy too. And and I, uh, but, I don't think a lot of people really appreciate how fast that is. Um, and then because it was on Sunday, I don't think I got the traction it needed to. Um, yeah. Because holy, like people don't realize how fast that is. And it's only a couple mile an hour off the fastest V bottom period, which is also in outer limits, but in three quarters of a mile. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Unbelievable Correct. run. Yeah. And and that was just a twin engine boat too, right? Yeah. 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 It, it, it's oh. yeah. I, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. It's insane. So even I mean, it doesn't matter. So twenty five hundred horsepower. So whatever. But the you know the fastest ever. Uh, they did it in three quarters of a mile, not not a, a, a long kilo, long run in. Um, with very very controlled conditions and remember it was that that was i was describing it was a lousy day and and wow i mean uh it, was, it really was spectacular and, and for some reason people aren't you know acknowledging how cool that was yeah how impressive yeah. it was yeah i, don't, I mean really I don't if, if you let them go for another quarter kilometer or quarter mile they probably could have matched the or beat or, or beat the speed number right then and there in those conditions easy that's awesome yeah yeah no it was very cool but but again so were you guys so that was awesome <laughs> well cool well guys you know I, I just talked to you guys like this morning i think and uh and we're on tonight so that's awesome i really appreciate you guys trusting me and and coming on and taking the time it's been really cool I'm glad to get to you know like i said i've been a fan on on social media. I wasn't a big social media guy. Then when I started this, I'm like, I better go follow so I can see what's going on. And I don't know how I found you guys. I think that that wave to wave guy always does stuff on you guys. I think maybe I saw him. I'm like, these boats are so cool. And I love the, I think it was it a 20, like a blue 20. I saw a mock up on not too long ago. That thing is really cool too. So yeah, your stuff's really cool. So yeah, we really appreciate you uh, giving us a chance to just chat. We love talking boats. Anytime, uh, sometimes people call and you know, they're, they're actually trying to to go and all we want to talk is boats that's you know we eat sleep and dream boats and that's just that's just what it is yeah. so again well, the business it's like you know sometime you got to stop and get back to work yeah. anyway yeah. yeah again it sounds like you guys came up with the right mix because you get to do a lot of fun a lot of cool stuff and a lot of stuff on your own so uh, whatever you're doing you're doing it you're doing it right so but yeah thanks again in your website uh, is it just toughmarine.com I think it's uh, under toughboats.com, uh, but if you typed in toughmarine.com, I think it would come okay. up just the same as well. And then same yeah. on social media. Yeah, social media is the same. Um, you know, you just if you miss it, then keep just searching. You'll see a whole bunch of boats that uh, you know, the name it's, tough it, on the yeah, side. Yeah, just the spelling. So T U F F. So yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. I'll add uh, links to all your stuff in all the show notes too, so people can find you. But. But yeah, again, thanks a lot. We'll be keeping an eye on you, and uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing that cat and uh, and whatever else you got going. I'm sure it's going to be going to be fun stuff. So, okay, yeah, thank you. We really appreciate All right. it. All right, thanks again, guys. Take care. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Powerboat Talk. If you like what you heard, please head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five star review. For more Powerboat Talk, follow us on Facebook or Instagram or visit our website at powerboattalk.com.